Welcome to our War Within Frost Mage starter video. Whether you're a veteran player eager to get ahead in the new expansion, or you're just curious about the latest changes for Frost Mages, well, this video is absolutely for you. We're going to cover everything that you need to hit the ground running, including a look at what's new for mages in War Within, the top talent choices, the best gear loadouts, the most optimal races, and as a bonus, we're also going to include some essential macros that you won't want to be without. And if you are ready to dominate in the War Within, our brand new update to the skill capped add-on has just dropped, giving skill capped members the best UI for PvP with just one click. We've partnered with the world's best players to ensure the skill capped UI is ready for every class in the War Within, and to bring you exclusive guides that unlock the full potential of your class. From maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech, we've got you covered. While everyone else is just confused, you can instantly get ahead of the curve with our guides which are designed to fast track your progress and put you miles ahead of the competition. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating or you're going to get your money back. So why wait? Click the link in the description below now and join SkillCap today. Now to kick things off, let's discuss about how Frost Mages are looking in the War Within, starting with what's new. Overall, Frost Mages continue to have a similar toolkit they originally had back in Dragonflight. We've kept all the same utility and the flavor that brings players to this spec in the first place. Now a majority of what's new focuses more towards the class talent tree, giving a bit more change in both our rotation and how much we obtain in our utility as we now have Ice Nova sharing a slot with Ring of Frost, causing us to lose out on one of our most powerful methods of CC. Now, this is because Ice Nova is vital for landing our huge Shatter combos, making it extremely important to add to our damage rotation. Time Anomaly has also undergone some dramatic changes, as we now receive Brain Freeze procs for more ways to apply Shatter. And when we receive Icy Veins, we're given a Water Elemental in the process, allowing us to earn even more shatters in uses of brain freeze. Not to mention, we have a completely new talent added to the mix as well, Barrier Diffusion, giving us a cooldown reduction on any barrier effect when one breaks. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. It's important to understand the main focal point of the War Within and where most of the new stuff really does come from, and it's from the introduction of what's called Hero Talents with every single class having two hero talent trees to choose from. For mages, this is Frostfire and Spellslinger. Frostfire will be your default hero talent tree. If you like the common shatter-based playstyle of Frost, well, just wait until you see what Frostfire can do. The centerpiece of this talent revolves around buffing your haste and mastery secondary stats and happens after dealing damage with a fire and frost spell, respectively. This is referred to as Fire Mastery and Frost Mastery. Although the name may be a little bit confusing here, just keep in mind that Frost Spells are what actually give Mastery, not Fire. And in case you're curious about how we generate Fire Stacks as a Frost Mage outside of Dragon's Breath, we rely heavily on our PvP talent, Ring of Fire, as this constantly applies fire damage on your enemies when they run through it. We also generate Fire Mastery Stacks from our new talent, Frost Firebolt, and we'll discuss this soon after. But anyways, the real exciting part about this tree is when you reach maximum stacks of Fire Mastery or Frost Mastery, giving you many ways to wreak havoc upon your opponents, especially with Frost Firebolt replacing our Frost Bolt, which is affected by other new talents for some crazy modifiers that are attached to it. And surprisingly, you can now summon both Comet Storm and a Meteor, almost making your spec have the best of both worlds from our Frost and Fire trees. The second tree, Spell Slinger, is more reliant on Frost Bolt to gain Brain Freeze procs, and since our recommended default build revolves around Ice Lance, you could expect to rarely spec into this tree. We also receive less uptime on our Shatter combos and Brain Freeze procs, making it way too weak in its current state. Ultimately, the Frostfire tree will be more favored, adding some nice blend of both Burst and AoE cleave that suits the playstyle of Frost Mage in the arena. Now that we have that basic understanding of what these trees offer, it's time to delve a little bit deeper and discuss how to best allocate our new hero talent points. 
But before we get into it, though, we do want to remind you about our free article site, which has just been updated for The War Within. As always, with the start of the new expansion, things can quickly change on a dime. So we're going to be keeping all of the information found in this guide up to date in our article. And I've also included talent import strings there, too. So do be sure to visit the link in the description below after this. All right, let's get back into the video. Now, as for our only viable hero talent tree, Frostfire, on the left side, the first node we come across is a choice, Imbued Warding or Meltdown. The latter is way worse in comparison to the amount of consistency Imbued Warding provides, as we now gain a Blazing Barrier at reduced effectiveness after using Ice Barrier. And what's great about this talent is that it synergizes pretty nicely with Barrier Diffusion, allowing us to reduce the cooldown even further on our Barrier spells. Down below, we have Isothermic Core, and as stated in the overview, this is going to summon a Meteor on the target you used Comet Storm on. In cases where you single a target out during your Shatter combo, you're going to be able to to deliver some massive burst here. This is because Meteor splits damage evenly based on how many targets it hits. And for your last talent on the left side, we have Excess Frost for even more Shatter action with Flurry upon reaching max Frost Mastery stacks. This is due to your Flurry applying an Ice Nova on the target the moment it lands. You're also going to have some additional cooldown reduction on your Comet Storm, assisting with the node above. As we come back up the tree here, we have Frostfire Bolt, as this replaces Frost Bolt with an even better, more enhanced version. And with our build prioritizing instant cast damage, we're going to heavily rely on the node below, Frostfire Empowerment, to make this spell instant cast as well. Going back up one node, we have the choice between severe temperatures and thermal conditioning. The latter serves almost zero benefit here, as we rarely hard cast this spell. And the damage from severe temperatures is way too high to pass up too, making our Frostfire Bolt even more stronger when we do end up casting it or when our Frostfire Empowerment buff is up. And now for the right side, we have our last choice node, Elemental Affinity or Flame and Frost. As we look for consistency here, Flame and Frost gives us very little, making Elemental Affinity way better of an option. This reduces the cooldown of our fire spells, giving us some valuable cooldown reduction on Dragon's Breath, Ring of Fire, and Blast Wave. You'll be able to either assist in making more aggressive plays or to help peel more frequently. Dropping down, we have Frostfire Infusion, making your Frost and Fire spells occasionally summon a weaker Frostfire Bolt to damage your opponent. This is also going to help with generating Frostfire Mastery stacks. And for our final right side node, we have Excess Fire, allowing our next Ice Lance to apply an Empowered Living Bomb. This is going to only come into play after obtaining maximum Fire Mastery stacks and is significant to our cleave damage when shattered. We also receive a Brain Freeze proc after Living Bomb explodes as an added bonus to our rotation. Finally, for our Capstone node, we have Flash Freeze Burn, allowing us to further benefit from Frostfire Empowerment by giving us a proc after using Icy Veins. We'll also receive maximum stacks and full duration for both Fire Mastery and Frost Mastery for more uptime on our secondary stats. And remember, you can find exclusive tips in our brand new class courses at skillcap.com where we're going to be releasing new guides every week throughout The War Within. Skillcap members can also unlock premium profiles ready for The War Within in the Skillcapped add-on. So don't miss out. Use the link in the description to start gaining rating today. All right, with the new additions covered, let's quickly go over what we're currently suggesting for your Frost and Mage talent trees. Now, as you can see, these remain mostly untouched from Dragonflight, with what's on both sides of the tree being the suggested default talents for Frostfire. Briefly touching on some of the highlights here, over on the Mage side of the tree, we have Alter Time as a most commonly used defensive to negate damage, and Master of Time to increase our uptime on Shimmer. Mass Barrier gives us more defensive utility for our teammates while making use of it ourselves. This also ties into our Barrier Diffusion talent helping us reduce the cooldown of all our barrier cooldowns once one breaks. Shimmer is our main source of mobility, and with it allowing us to blink while casting, we can land CC at times where we wouldn't normally be able to. And Dragon's Breath for another method of initiating CC chains or to peel for yourself and allies. 
On the frost side, some of the major highlights here are permafrost lances, which makes frozen orb more worthwhile to press for more ice lance damage. We also have Sub-Zero, adding more damage to your spells if you attack them in any frozen root effect, which makes it important to apply this during your burst whenever you can. We have Chain Reaction, which may change up your rotation in cases where you want to maintain the damage buff for Ice Lance. Shatter, which is constantly mentioned in this guide, and for good reason here, as this is how we crit our spells as long as the target is frozen. And lastly, we have Icy Veins as our most notable offensive cooldown that is stuck with Frost Mages literally since the beginning of the classic era of WoW. But now, we have some nice quality of life improvements to it for PvP, allowing you to activate a Water Elemental for some extra boost to your damage spells, while also accelerating your haste and preventing any cast delay from enemy damage. Now, if you want to learn about different builds and how to adjust your talents for each matchup, do be sure to check out our up-to-date Frost Mage article. The final step in setting up our talent loadout is discussing PvP talents. Here we have two talents that are never really going to change, Ring of Fire and Concentrated Coolness. As for Concentrated Coolness, this grants us a buff to your Frozen Orb's damage and positioning, as you're going to be able to place it wherever you want. Ring of Fire, on the other hand, is a great quality of life improvement to your toolkit as this benefits from elemental affinity for a shorter cooldown and enables us to generate Fire Mastery stacks way more efficiently. This spell is also convenient in cases where we get interrupted on Frost and want to keep the pressure rolling. We're then left with one extra slot, with those being based on the matchup at hand. Master Shepherd is your preferred grab here and is great for solo shuffle where dampening stacks really high. Now with this talent, your opponents are not going to be healed during Polymorph, giving you more of a wider array of landing potential kills. Snowdrift is quite promising if you play as a wizard composition that inherently lacks stun effects, as you can CC as many targets as long as they remain in your Snowdrift's radius. And if you want to be a bit fancy here, you can spec into Ice Wall. This is more versatile as you have multiple ways of using this spell. But for the most effective way of using this, you'll be wanting to place it between the target you're hitting and the enemy healer, creating a barrier of line of sight. This acts almost like another way of CCing healers without actually applying a CC on the target. All right, now that we understand the optimal talent choices and the reasoning behind all of them, the next goal is setting up our character. The first step in this process is going to be deciding on a race. Your first and most preferable option is Night Elf. Comparative to all other races, Night Elf provides the most consistent benefits to your survivability. Given a skilled enough mage, it's really hard to find a more impactful racial than what Night Elf offers, Shadow Mel. The most notable use out of this ability is to immune some incoming projectiles or damage, which includes Chaos Bolt, Storm Bolt, or Mortal Coil to completely negate their effects. Now, we also have Dwarf as a solid alternative to Night Elf, and will be highly sought after if Asa or Feral continue to massacre their way up the ladder in the new upcoming season. By choosing this race, we get Stone Form for a physical damage reduction and a removal on all Poison, Disease, Curse, Magic, and Bleed effects. Now, directing our attention to the Horde races, Orc continues to be a strong contender for Mage, granting us Blood Fury as a flat on-use buff to our primary stat, always scaling the best at the beginning of every expansion. Now, not to mention Going Orc grants you access to Hardiness for some nice stun reduction, making Shimmer way more forgiving in most matchups. And in cases where you're bored of choosing Orc and Night Elf, you can opt for the Pandaren race, providing you with an instant cast in cap called Quaking Palm that we can use to extend our CC chain without having cast. With races out of the way, let's take a look at what's shaping up to be your best in-slot gear for Season 1. But first, since you're likely to find upgrades along the way, let's discuss stat priority. Our main focus here should be on versatility. This stat, it's a no-brainer. We get targeted most of the time in matchups, and it's an excellent stat for PvP overall. Haste is great since it makes our cast quicker and reduces the global cooldown. This allows us to land CC easier at the right times, or to consistently pressure your opponents with the constant spam of ice lances with our Fingers of Frost procs. And with our faster globals, we're going to burn off more of our icicles during a game, giving us even more Fingers of Frost procs thanks to Flash Freeze, and even Brain Freeze if we pick it up. 
After haste, you're going to be looking to include some mastery into our gear in order to enhance the amount of damage that comes from our Icicles, Ice Lance, and Comet Storm. And lastly, we have Critical Strike. This should be avoided at all costs since we already have Shatter that makes up for our lack of this stat. Over the next few weeks, you should look to collect your PvP Scaled 2 set with the exception of the helmet, shoulders, and legs, which should be our Conquest pieces. We suggest getting forged gladiator pieces for most of our off pieces. However, you can substitute these for Algari crafted to make use of our embellishments and to optimize our secondaries. All of these pieces should use both haste and versatility for our secondary stats. For our jewelry, we're going to use the Algari crafted rings and neck, but if you feel weak in terms of your survivability, we suggest opting in forged gladiator's necklace instead. Our weapons will also be crafted, and for our trinket, we're going to use the insignia and medallion as our typical standard. Now, let's get everything enchanted. For your cloak, you're going to want Chant of Burrowing Rapidity. For chest, Crystalline Radiance. Bracers, Chant of Armored Speed. Legs, Sunset Spell Thread. Boots, Scout's March, or Plains Runner's Breeze. And then for your rings, grab Radiant Haste or Radiant Versatility for both, depending on your preference. Finally, the last enchant is for your weapon, where we suggest getting Authority of Radiant Power. Due to the addition of the Vicious Jeweler setting, you're now going to be able to add gems to your helmet, amulet, rings, belt, and bracers. Now, one of these can be one of three unique PvP-specific gems. Out of these, we highly recommend the Cognitive Bloodstone, which acts almost identical to the Precognition Embellishment from Dragonflight. For the rest of your gym slots, the Quick Sapphire Gym provides the best overall boost to your favorite stats. And for the best combination for embellishments, as it currently stands, you're going to want to use both Dark Moon Sigil Ascension on your weapon and Writhing Armor Banding on any of your off pieces. These embellishments are going to provide you with a nice boost to your secondary stats, which further assist you with your damage profile. However, if these do get nerfed in PvP, look to grab Elemental Focusing Lens as these provide us with a consistent DPS increase as long as we have one gym equipped on our character. Finally, let's wrap things up with a look at some must-have macros for Frostmage. First, we suggest having focus macros for all of your important crowd control and interrupts, enabling you to CC off targets without the need to deselect your current target. So that's Polymorph, Slow, and Counterspell. And for arena macros, these essentially do the same thing. And although it may seem a bit more difficult to get into than focus macros, this is going to allow you to effectively apply a spell on any arena player in a 3v3 game without having to rely on player frames. As a frost mage, dispelling your allies with remove curse can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming, especially when target swapping. To streamline this process, consider using party one and party two macros. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, Party 1 refers to the person at the top of your party frames, and Party 2 is the second person. The basic way of doing this is what you see on screen now, where you're going to need two macros for each ability, exactly like the example you see on screen. If you've played Frostmage before, you're most likely familiar with the awkwardness of waiting for your Icy Flows cast to finish, or by moving your character mid-cast in order to use Ice Block. We highly suggest you pick up this macro, as this allows you to press Ice Block without any issues or delay. This will guarantee your safety during crucial moments where you want to get your defensives off. And on the topic of Ice Block, we have another macro that is essential to your toolkit, Cancel Aura Macros. For Ice Block, this allows you to leave it early for two key situations, when you want to execute your target or when your healer has safely recovered you from danger. We have another Cancel Aura featured on the screen here that remains crucial to your success, allowing you to remove all through time in situations where it becomes a net loss in positioning or for your character's health. And remember this, Skill Capped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. Now we make this promise because Skill Capped really does work. And if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking on the link in the description. All right, guys, that's just about everything you're ever gonna need to get started in the war within. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.